by any means. Okay, let's say we want to find all the cold fusion tags in this directory. Well, cold fusion tag starts with, um, you know, the CF part, and then uh, then some stuff that is not a uh, closing angle bracket, and then an angle bracket, right? Um, so I think that's it. No, that's not it. Plus. All right, I'm not sure what's up with this uh, closing angle bracket, but, uh, oh, it's because I put the plus inside the character class. I'm not sure if you guys saw that, but, okay, maybe not, I don't know. But <laughs> leaving, off the, uh, leaving off the ending angle bracket, we were able to search for all the, the cold fusion tags. And true, you could, uh, you could do that with a regular string, um, but yeah, I wish I, I knew that angle bracket. I'll just move on to the next example. So when you're using regex in, in code, uh, there's various libraries depending on your flavor. Um, I just, I'm not going to go through these, but you can see in various languages it's different. So that'll be up to you to learn. Um, and Wikipedia has a comparison. The biggest thing to note is that not all implementations are the same, and not all implementations support every operator. For example, in grep, like I couldn't use a star. That's something I looked up yesterday. So it doesn't support star. But, no, no, no it does support star. That's, that's my mistake, I think. Okay. Uh, it, it supports star, but it doesn't support plus. Um, there are ways around that, but again, you know, it's, a, it's dependent upon what you're doing. Uh, okay. So another, another um, use in the search space is programming language detection. Um, a few of us were working on a command line script. What it did is it took a um, file from standard in and it would uh, detect the, the language and post it to a paste bin uh, so we could uh, review. So I will just show some quick code. It's kind of ugly code, but gets the job done. Uh, it's Ruby, just an excerpt. But basically, uh, it has a bunch of regular expressions, and if the piece of code matches the regular expression, it says you know what kind of code it is. So, for example, this first one searches for, like, a starting angle bracket and a PHP, um, PHP, and then returns PHP. And there's various. So, uh, another use is uh, syntax highlight, highlighting. You may have seen on the wiki that a bunch of stuff is syntax highlighted code. Um, that's via an external library called, like, syntax highlighter or something. This happens to be a cold fusion um, adapter or plugin for that, that syntax highlighter. So basically, what, basically what's going on is this guy is, um, or girl might be, um, is specify, specifying a spaced limited list of function names and keywords, and then building a regular expression from each to uh, perform the syntax highlighting. Some other uses, uh, is the, one is the normalization. So especially in like large organizations um, with legacy systems, I used to work for a pharmaceutical company and all of their systems were in like COBOL. So whenever I wanted some data, it'd be coming to me in a flat file. And uh, so sometimes you'll need to, to quickly process a file and you don't want to write a bunch of code to do it. If you're somewhat familiar with regular expressions, you can just, you know, it's like, like that, uh, especially especially useful for one-off uh, processing. A lot of times we'll need to load a new application with users and uh, we'll give someone like an Excel form or something and then they give us back something and it's like totally not normalized, everything's like inconsistent. Uh, it might be, be like a user list and it might be like, some might be first name, last name, last name, first name, 
some might have Mrs. in them or Mr. And, you know, that can be hairy. That's a one-off use. You might not want to, like, program something, and you might not want to do it manually. There might be, like, hundreds of names. Uh, also, normalizing phone numbers and zip code, that's something you, you might also have to do for various reports, legacy data, and uh, part of the user list as well. So, um, I'm just going to show an example of normalizing normalizing a user list. So, uh, obviously, it would be easier to, to do this by hand since there's only four, but imagine like there's 400. So, first off, we know that probably any commas in the code or in the list are like last name, first name. So, that is what I'm going to correct first. What? How did I do that? Where? View. Oh. Okay. Okay. So first I'm going to reverse the last names and first names if, if uh, you know, it happens. So I'm going to say any word character, an alphanumeric uh, character, So one or many, uh, one or more, or, yeah, one or more of them, then a comma, then a space. The uh, slash s searches for any white space. So if there was a new line, if there was a tab, or something like that, it's just generic for that. I could also do a space if I wanted, but I'm just going to do the slash s. And then uh, we have the first name, a bunch of more. Uh, word characters, and I just want to reverse them. So, part of extraction is that, um, depending on your rice flavor, uh, the machine will put um, the captures in various uh, placeholders. So, in this example, we have the first group in dollar sign one, and the second group in dollar sign two. So, basically, we're just swapping them, and we're not capturing the comma, if you notice right here, so that won't come through, okay? Okay, so I'm not sure if that was too quick, but basically changed uh, Callahan Jake to Jake Callahan. Okay, and you know, imagine that propagating for 500 names. Um, yeah? For, for that space, that would have been any number of spaces? No, that would have been one. Only for one, so if you had or yes. Like that, it would not have that up. No. What we could do, if normally, what I, if I was u actually using this, I would take a quick scan. That way, I could know, like, kind of what to expect. Mm -hmm. um, but so you could also add a plus, and that will just, you know, capture or that will match any amounts of white space. So. Okay. Uh, so next, I'm going to strip. The salutations, if I encounter a Mr., Mrs., or Ms., what I want to do is replace that with nothing. Okay, and that left an extra space. Now, what I probably should have done is say, uh, if there is any amount of space after, after, then I also replace that.